Hi, my name is Leon and today I'll show you how I built this hand wheel. Here you can see the finished product. But getting to this point took a bit longer than planned. In this video I take you back to the beginning where I thought I could whip this up in less than a weekend. Empathy on thought. Stick around if you're curious to see how I designed and built this. And to watch me tackle each challenge along the way. Just heads up, I'm not a professional electrician or an expert builder. I'm doing this purely for fun and to make a video. Welcome to my project. So next, let's take a look at the parts I'll need to build this hand wheel. I'll go through Farley Express to quickly find each one. And I'll show the prices as we go, so we get an idea of the total cost. The first part is the pulse hand wheel. That's the core control unit. Then I'll need a Raspberry Pi Zero for the programming and control. For display, I'm using a 0.92 inch OLED screen. To make everything portable, I'll use a 3.7 volt lithium ion battery, along with a BMS module for safe charging via USB-C. I'll also need a few basic buttons to simulate the key assignments. And for the joystick, I'm reusing two analog sticks from an old PS3 gamepad. Finally, I have a two-way switch to turn the device on and off. On top of these, I'll need some PLA filament, aluminum, brass, wires and solder to complete the build. And that's it, now we will see the total cost adding up, giving us a clear picture of the budget for this setup. Before starting, we need a few additional items for the Raspberry Pi. A micro SD card, a micro USB to USB A cable and a wireless adapter for keyboard and mouse. After gathering most of the parts, I first soldered the pins onto the Raspberry Pi. So I could use the GPIO pins. Then I solder a USB cable to the power supply to power the Raspberry Pi. After that, I connected the Pulse hand wheel by linking it to 5 volts and GND and attach the A and B signals to the correct GPIO pins. Before continuing with the project, I wanted to make sure I could get the required code to run on the Raspberry Pi using Python, just to test the hand wheel and see if it works. To do this, I first needed to install Raspberry OS Lite in the 32-bit version, without any graphical interface. I'm accessing the Raspberry Pi and doing all the coding directly through the terminal via an SSH connection. Once that was set up, I had to configure the Raspberry Pi to be recognized as a USB interface when connected to a PC via USB. This turned out to be a complicated task and it took me many many hours to figure out. I then created a Python code and uploaded it to the Pi. Since I'm not a programmer, I decided to get help from ChatGPT for this part. But this wasn't as simple as it sounds. ChatGPT, after a certain number of suggestions, tends to lose the thread. Often, it repeats the same suggestions as it gave 10 questions earlier, which leads to a frustration cycle. Without digging into the code yourself, you can't up feeling stuck and extremely frustrated. I just can't get Mr. Pi Zero to work for me. Everything feels overly complicated. And debugging takes forever. Every time I updated the code and tried to test it, it feels like a nightmare all over again. I have to restart Raspbian and reconnect it over Terminal again and again. This waiting game is driving me crazy. I think it's time to say goodbye. <sighs> oh Yuki, 
I really don't know what to do anymore. The Raspberry Pi just wasn't working for me. What do you have there, Yuki? The ESP32? You little lifesaver! This could actually be the solution! I've actually had good experience with the ESP32 in the past. I set up code for a watering system without any issues. And all the problems I had with the P weren't a problem on the ESP32. So I'm giving it a chance at trying the same setup as before. Starting with code for the hand wheel to see if I can build a Bluetooth hit interface. After uploading the code with the Arduino IDE, I was immediately able to find the ESP32 as a Bluetooth keyboard without any issues. To test if it worked, I moved the hand wheel left and right in a text file to see if the cursor followed. And it did! Perfect! So, now that I know the code actually works, I can finally get doing what I do best. Stealing ideas, copying and recreating. <laughs> this beautiful hand wheel design here, I stole from someone else as a base. And now I'll start adding my own ideas to it in Fusion 360. So, I'm measuring all the components I showed you earlier and trying to fit them as neatly as possible into the case. I'm customizing the design to match my vision. And adding a few accents by using different materials, PLA, aluminum and brass. Once I finished the design in CAD, it was time to start making the parts. First. I 3D printed most of the components. For the next step, I'll need some safety gloves. Oops. Let's look better. Since I want to keep the rule design of the remote as simple as possible, I'll need black screws. Unfortunately, I don't have any on hand. So instead, I'm using what we call Schnellbrunierung in Germany. It allows me to blacken metal. Oh yeah, look at this badass black metal screw. Here are most of the parts we need for our hand wheel, including the mechanical components. My battery? I actually got it from, well, from an old disopposable vape I found on the street. Just like this one here. This battery are perfect for a project like this. Next, I'll solder the parts together and mount everything in the case. I'm not an electrician, so please don't try this at home. What I'm doing here might not be totally safe, since I'm not a professional. Here, I'm connecting the BMS, the switch and the battery. I'm holding the small display in place with resin, and queuing it with UV light.
Was nicht passt, wird passend gemacht. What doesn't fit, will be made to fit. Since I don't feel like explaining every single electronic component and where it's connected, I've put together the super professional drawing in case anyone's interested in what I exactly did. So, here's the hand wheel, fully assembled, but honestly, I'm not happy with the quality at all. To get to my desired result, I had to work through a bunch of prototypes. It wasn't as easy as it looks in the video. But after all the setbacks, I finally have this result in my hands. Sorry, I didn't film every part of that. But honestly, it wouldn't be pretty boring to watch. When I show you the finished product, of course, also mean the code. The code for this hand wheel was actually more work than designing and building the entire wee thing. When it comes to the finished product, the code is really the main piece. Yes, I created it with ChatGPT, but let me tell you, it was still a nightmare. So, here we are again, right where it all started. But now, with the finished product. One feature I haven't fully explained yet is the function button. The function button lets us use the hand wheel so that the pulse wheel can control three different functions. Start position, right and left. Then one press for up and down, press again for the Z axis. Now all that's left is the final test to see if everything works. And that's it. Wow, this remote is so well made, I can even create real masterpieces with it. And I can do it hands free. Thank you all for watching the video. Goodbye and don't forget to like and subscribe.